tired when you wake up in the morning? You sometimes feel down or depressed. Like you have no one to talk to. Well, you're not alone. There are millions of other people dealing with the same problems. And that's why I take Asquinac T3. Asquinac T3 helps me to deal with these problems by allowing me to ignore how I really feel. By not knowing how I feel, I am unable to feel anything. And all the problems that seem to have bothered me for so long are no longer there. I can only imagine that that has to feel pretty good. Side effects include loss of memory, high blood pressure, confusion, shortness of breath, loss of appetite, diarrhea, and a deterioration of all healthy relationships. People with heart conditions should consult a physician before being subscribed to Asquinac T3. And if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, you should stop using Asquinac T3 and consult your doctor immediately. It's nice to know that there are people out there who care about how stupid I am. It's nice to know that someone cares. If you don't know what's wrong with you, it's probably because nothing is. And Ask Connect T3 is here to help. It's a life-enhancing miracle, but there are some things you should know. It may cause agitation, palpitations, excessive salivation, constipation, male lactation, rust-colored urination, hallucinations, bad vibrations, mild electric shock sensations, but it's worth it for the drugs I need. I'd heard about Peters. He was a good battalion medical officer. Though not a psychiatrist, he seemed to have been quite sold on the subject. Colonel Abbott, this is Dr. Yost. You reported in the division and just got here. Oh, Doc Overland's replacement, huh? Yes. Glad to have you aboard. You're getting into one of the best outfits on the line. This is Major Barton, my exec. Glad to know you, sir. You got a good bunch of men here, Doctor. I guess I thought a CO and an exec in combat would be rather taut and brass bound. But these men, and in fact most of the officers I was to meet, I learned to respect for many reasons. They were top professional soldiers, highly competent and assured, but friendly and receptive to any sensible ideas we had to offer. Yeah, the other day we were talking about this combat fatigue problem, and the surge here says to me, without batting an eye, Colonel, there's a direct relation between the quality of leadership and the number of NP casualties in any battalion. Of course, I knew that there was nothing personal in it. As a matter of fact, I, I agree with him completely, although I'd never looked at it in those terms before. You watch more, he's been keeping a lot of men we thought had gone psycho on, I mean NP cases, and returning them to the line. Yeah, the old professor showed us that some of these Marines that looked like they couldn't take it were really good stuff. It's surprising what a night's sleep, a little encouragement, and getting them back front will do for most of them. Well, we'll see you, Colonel. Right. Well, by the way, sir, Able Company may have some rough going tomorrow. They lead the attack. Jump off at 0630. Thanks, Major. The word's out. We'll probably have a few extra customers at sick call tonight. Well, you know how to handle them, sir. Yeah, before Doc Peters joined the battalion, sick bay unloaded too many good men to the rear. I have spent 35 years of my life working in an industry the pharmaceutical industry, and they do nothing but annihilate the population of this world. And why do they do that? Because they want to make money, 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 money. They don't care about your lives. They only care about their wallets. My hands are just as dirty as these people. The pharma industry gave me a good job. And I felt that I was in medicine because that's what I studied. So I started as a salesman. And as I moved up in my career, where I eventually became a director for a company uh, in Sweden, the, the, the affiliate company of one of the largest and most evil pharma corporations in the world, Eli Lilly and Company, because I was part of the evil. I had a career. I did a lot of bad things. They fired me. I started my own company, worked for several other pharma companies, big ones, world players. People are dying from taking medication that was legalized because I... the Swedish government to get the Sulasso for Prozac 
in Sweden. Now, can you imagine that? Sweden is reputedly one of the cleanest, most transparent countries in the world. They have the Nobel Prize of Medicine. The Americans, they love the prestige of the Nobel Prize. That is why it was important for them to get the registration of Prozac. What is the pharma industry doing to us? They are the most powerful industry in the world. They sleep in the same bed with the governments. They use corruption to get what they want. Corruption involves money. They have lots and lots and lots of money. And that is how they make their money. The psychiatric market is huge, and, and every company out there wants a little piece of that, that pie because it is so lucrative. We did a lot of lunches and dinners, and we brought in speakers, and those speaker, speakers were obviously paid by us, and we would wave um, you know, renowned studies at them from renowned journals. But of course, we would never say that these, these studies were paid for by our company and that the that the, it was written by a ghostwriter who was paid by our company or that our company tends to do a ton of, of advertising within that particular medical journal. We would never say that. It's the psychiatric meds that are so easy to um, expand into all of the problems of our life. So right now we see the industry, or over the past several years we've seen the industry medicalizing you know so many different things throughout our life if you're shy here take a pill you know if you're um, a little anxious here take a pill if you have road rage we've got a pill for that too they have been able um, the pharmaceutical industry through direct to consumer advertising and the beautiful drug ads that are on television they have been able to play off our deepest insecurities as human beings and it's so effective it's marketing this is marketing this is not science this is incredibly effective effective marketing it has nothing to do with science. We're being bombarded left and right with these beautiful ads on the screen painting this lovely Norman Rockwell life on the screen of beautiful, smiling, happy, sexy people and we all want a little piece of that. Typically an ad like that to produce the ad would be somewhere probably in the million dollar range and then to air these ads, to buy the airtime slots, again depending on what time of day they're airing or what, what type of show they're airing on, can cost anywhere from tens of thousands for a 30 second ad up to close to a million dollars. And the most recent campaigns of the last year or so, you're hearing so much, uh, ask your doctor or talk to your doctor about. And when you hear that on the screen, it sounds so nice. It sounds like they really care and want you to discuss this with your doctor. But what the studies have shown is if you actually bring up a brand name drug with your doctor by name, you're significantly more likely to walk out the door with that drug. So they do that for a reason. The industry is responsible to Wall Street and Wall Street first. They have to they have to please Wall Street because they are private industry. And so when you have that scenario, you have to make profits your number one goal. We have billions of dollars being spent right now in terms of marketing, in terms of PR. Within a few months of starting psychiatry, I was realizing there was something seriously wrong with it. It was immediately obvious to me that the psychiatrists were making claims that they couldn't have made, that they were making claims which simply were not justified in biology. Um, but if you stand up and say that what you're doing, gentle, ladies and gentlemen, is not science, it's pseudoscience, then you are challenging what's holding the whole profession together. What's happening in psychiatry is that there is a general agreement there will be no criticism of the status quo. There will be no criticism. I think secretly they know deep inside that if anybody criticizes this or examines this too closely, it might fall apart. This is all held up. The sky hook that holds this palaver, this mess of jargon in place, is the single injunction Mental disorder is brain disorder. That is the single intellectual hook that holds this edifice in the air, that stops it all collapsing in a heap. They just make this claim, mental disease is 
brain disease. But that, as I've said, is an ideological claim. People are being told, you have a chemical imbalance of the brain which is genetically determined and you've got it for life and there's nothing you can do about it and you will forever be limited and restricted and you must take these tablets which will dampen your um, creativity, your sensitivity, your awareness, your, they will damage your sexuality. You've got to do this because you're sick and we can see it, but you can't. Now that is the, the, that to me is the catastrophe that has to be exposed. The general public needs to know where their hundreds of millions of dollars of research money is going and where their billions upon billions of dollars of treatment money is, is going and above all, where their sons and daughters and mothers and fathers are going. And that's where it's at. Bugger the money. Excuse me, but bugger the money. It's the lives that count. Today, I'm um, here to talk to you about uh, tension deficit dis, uh, disorder. It's uh, millions of Americans uh, worldwide. W worldwide. Worldwide.